you are called to love fervently. And we are called to love all the way to the grave. Is that right? That's how your light shines in a very dark world. Okay, so, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which, what does it do? The word of God, it lives and abides. Now, how many of you guys read books outside of the Bible with script prophecy? There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Literature. It's why you got taught how to read, right? But, um, I don't really like to read except the Bible and things like that, so I don't tend to do that. What is a book that's very popular that people like to read right now? <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's why you're a group of that. <laughs> that makes your pastor very happy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay. But see, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a religious type book. I'm yeah, talking about a secular book. Killing Lincoln. Kill, okay, let's say yeah, Killing Lincoln. Would, would, would you take that book, Killing Lincoln, and say that is a living word? No. Okay? Uh, any other secular book, would you read that and say that was a living word that will abide forever? You see the difference between those kind of writings? Now listen, you guys, I was just looking at Junior, this, this is great. You guys remember when you were in school, in elementary school, and you were first learning how to read, and they took you to the library, and you could get the Dr. Seuss books? Yes. Remember Green Eggs and Ham? Yes. I still remember that book to this day. Remember the book about the little fish that grew into like a really big fish and took over the whole house? That wasn't Dr. Seuss, it was another book. But would you say that was a living word? No. Do you understand the difference between those books... <laughs> And the Bible? Yeah. The Bible is the Word of God which lives and abides forever. The Word lives because God lives. And God's Word is just as alive as He is. What's another name for Jesus? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word abideth and liveth forever. When you read the Bible, if you read it like a textbook or like a novel, it will do nothing for you. But if you come and read the Bible because you're wanting to know the living God who is contained in that word, who is portrayed in that word, then that word will become alive in you and it will last forever. Amen. For all flesh is as... This is something Ricky says after he uh, reads from the, the pulpit, right? Okay, this is a quote from the Old Testament. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower does what? Falleth or fadeth away, but what's verse 25? The word of the Lord endureth forever. What is the difference between your scriptures... And the Quran. What's the difference between your scriptures and the Hindu scriptures? We have. The you same. know Hindus got scriptures, right? No. no. We have. Do Jesus. you know that? We have Jesus, who's a savior. How many gods are there? One. 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 Well, there's there's hundreds of thousands of gods. That was a trick question. <laughs> How many true God? One. One. Okay? And this is the difference, brothers and sisters, and this is what this battle has always been about. See, because every false god points right back to Satan. Satan has a million ways for you to follow him. Because if you're not following the true God, you will follow him. And he is the false god of this world. And every false religion, and every false idol, and every false scripture points to him. So, out of all the holy writings that's contained in this entire world, how do you know that your Bible is the right one? Because it's the Word of God, spoken like a true Christian. Do you know why it is the truth? Because it's the only one that has in that Word a Savior who pays.
paid the price for your sin and brought reconciliation between you and God. Every other holy book is a book of works where your righteousness has to outweigh your wickedness and in the scales your good works have to outweigh your bad works and then God will accept you. Okay? does nothing for your inherent sin. The Bible speaks of a lamb who would be sacrificed, who would pay the penalty of sin. That is what separates the Bible and its God from every other false god because it pays for your sin. It does something that you can never do yourself. Does that make sense? Okay. That is the end of chapter 1. Turn with me to Titus chapter 3. Let's look at verses 5 through 7. Titus chapter 3 verses 5 through 7. It says, not by works of what? Which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. The difference between Christianity and all other religions on the face of this earth, even Judaism as it's practiced today, is a Savior who has saved you from your sin. No other religion has someone or something that has taken your sin and paid for it. Right? Okay? So that's what Titus, verse 5 tells us. Verse 6 says, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Do you understand what God has done for you? Ricky, one of your favorite books in the New Testament would be what? Romans. Romans. And in the book of Romans, it says that while we were enemies, enemies of God, what did God do for us? He gave us hope, and He gave us the opportunity to have eternal life. What God did is that He paid our sin debt. Brothers and sisters, do you know anything about church history uh, after around the 8th or 9th century? Up until about the 13th century. Why were Christians willing to just die? Why were they willing to allow their families to die? and not renounce your faith in this Jesus. Say it loud. They knew he was eternal life. Because they knew who Jesus was. They knew that they had a Savior, and they knew that their Savior knew them, and that their Savior held them in the palm of his hand, and that death couldn't separate them from him. And they were willing to be light, in a dark world. And they were willing to let that light shine even at the shedding of their blood. And God is calling you for the same purpose. Now thank God you're not called to shed your blood. But when that time, and if that time comes, are you willing? Do you know Him enough? Is your faith in Him strong enough to do that? If you can't swim in knee deep water, how do you want to swim when the water gets over your head? That's asked in the Old Testament. Okay? If you can't handle those things that come into your life now without questioning God's love, how are you going to handle when things really get tough and hard? Does God ever leave you? He never leaves you and He never forsakes you. All through your life. But God does allow bad things to happen. 
God does allow pain to come and touch us. God does allow Satan to throw his fire and darts at us. Why does he do it? Because he's cruel? Because he's tempting you? The Bible says that God never tempts. But what does God do? He does test. And why does he test? Because God doesn't test you so God knows where your faith is. God allows these tests to come to show you where your faith is. You guys understand that? It's not so God can say, well, I need to see whether his name really needs to be in this book. God knows that. But God wants you to see just where your human nature is and where your spirit is. Okay, now I'm going to close this morning with a testimony. How many of you believe that God actually intervenes in your day-to-day -day life? How many of you believe that God will save your life when you need it? Now, Ray, you should know about this. You drive a truck, right? Now, I had my uh, F-250 and my dump trailer filled with, it, with an oak tree uh, logs and um, an F-250. What is that? That's a three-quarter ton truck, right? So when I got to the dump, I weighed 23,800 pounds. And I'm carrying out with an F-250. Okay? Now I had trailer brakes, so everything was, was, was cool. But I made it there. I almost didn't make it there. I didn't realize how heavy it was. Usually I have a one-ton truck and I don't have any problems. Okay? So I have this thing and I'm going down I-4 and when you are heading eastbound and you come by the rest area in Longwood, mm -hmm. they're starting to resurface that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when they resurface, they actually take the old asphalt and they take that out. Now there's a lip there that was about, felt like that big or bigger. To a car, not a problem. To a truck, not a problem. But a 23,000 pound, three quarter ton truck with a trailer on the back, that was a problem. I was only doing 55, I hit that thing, and the trailer bounced, and when it bounced, it went this way, then it went that way, then it went this way, then it went that way. Now Ray, you know there's a certain point that once it gets so far, there's no coming back. I reached that point. Now, the tires on the back of that trailer were smoking because they were skidding and not turning no more because of the angle that trailer was on. Okay? Now, I had logs in there that were, okay? That would have dumped on the highway, you know what I'm saying? Not only me, but whoever was around me. Looking in my rearview mirror as I could see my trailer on this side and my trailer on that side, I've seen people who were behind me on the side of me parking like the Red Sea. Because they knew what was going on. Now listen, it got to the point of no return. And I knew that. And I cried out for Jesus to help me. And when I did that, I st I can't, after I cried out his name, I was at a complete stop on the grass on the side of the road. My God. Oh, my God. If you ever driven a truck or a trailer and you've had that happen to you, and you know, you get to a certain point, that trailer's going to flip and you're going with it. Okay? And there's just, there's, it was at that point. God answered that prayer. Amen. 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 And I'm here today Amen. in one piece. Thank God for that. Amen. Because uh, I don't know what would have happened. It wouldn't have been pretty. Uh, and it would have been pretty for anybody who would have been affected by all of those laws. Amen. Okay? Now, with that, um, some of you know, most of you know I work for Florida Hospital. Okay? Now, I was working for the landscaping department, and I was doing irrigation for, at one time, five of the campuses around Central Florida. I dropped that down before. They gave me 90, over 90% 90 of my work. I stopped working for that department uh, because they weren't paying me in a timely fashion and I was right at the point of having to claim bankruptcy. Uh, when you run a business and you have constant expenditures, right, you have to get paid in a timely fashion so you can keep up with your bills. 
Well, for the last three years, I've been digging a hole that I wasn't able to see getting out of. And it got to a point where it didn't matter whether I continued to work for them at that one department or not because the outcome would be the same. So I talked with the leadership here at the church, told them what was going on. And if I had to claim bankruptcy, I had to make some changes. And they asked, is there anything we can do? And I told them, there's nothing anybody can do because I have to make so much money a month. I think there's not one person that could actually say, oh, yeah, here. And I said, what well, I need is a miracle. This was a day-to-day -day thing of whether can I make it through today, we'll see how tomorrow goes. And if, if I don't make it through tomorrow, once you start this snowball rolling, what happens to a snowball when it's okay? And just like that trailer, it gets out of control. So, again, there's a point of no return. And what I needed was a miracle to get me because I was right at that point. And it was okay today, whether it's going to go. And I've been praying, my family's been praying, the church has been praying. And it went from a day to day to a week to week. Okay, if I can make it this week, okay. and it's gone from a week to week now to a month to month. Okay? That was a divine intervention from God. Now, um, you know, again, we're going month to month, and, and I made it a full month, and now we've come into the next month, and I made it to the end of that month, which is September, and I'm beginning now, but now we're going, it's, it's, it's a touch and go thing, okay? but God has been faithful. So, everybody has problems, right? Most people don't know what you're going through, but everybody has problems. You have to decide whether you really trust that God will take care of those problems, but then you have to accept what God's will is. If God's will is not what you want it to be, you still have to accept that and not lose your faith in it. Right? God has called you to be light in darkness. Brothers and sisters, the darkness is going to get a whole lot darker than it is now. And when it does it, it should make you glow brighter and brighter. This is why when you get down to the end of time, the world is going to be separated into just two camps. Those that follow God and their light shines so bright that Jesus can come back. Because the bride is ready and she is adorned for her husband. And the wicked are just engulfed in their darkness. We are at that point today of making ready. The shaking is happening. Will you let your light so shine that men will glorify your Father in heaven? Or will you be engulfed by the darkness that's engulfing this world? The choice is yours. Our closing hymn is hymn number 245.